G'day, Starlo here. Garfish, what do you think of when I say garfish? Great bait, something good to eat, fun for the kids to catch, or fun for the big kids like me to catch. I've come out today specifically to target garfish. I was brim fishing here the other day and saw a lot of gar, and I thought I'm gonna go back and catch some of those. They're not something I've spent a lot of time targeting over the years, but I've always enjoyed catching them. There's a mixture of sizes here. I'm gonna keep the small ones for bait and hopefully get enough of the big ones to put together a couple of really nice meals. Let's see how we go. I put some bread in the water here. I've got a lot of little garries already looking at it. There's a few bigger ones starting to sneak in. I've got a very simple float rig here and I'm gonna try a few different baits. I'm starting off with just a little piece of prawn. I've got some pilchards, but let's get the rig in the water and see if we can catch our first gar for the day. Better slip the sunnies on, it's pretty bright out here. Oh wow, there's a lot of little ones there. Oh, so many little ones. Let's see how we go. I don't think I'm gonna to need to cast very far either. Oh, hello. <laughs> that was ridiculously easy. <laughs> oh dear, now I don't know whether you'd call that one a bait-sized one or an eating-sized one, a bait-sized one, I think. But I'll put it in the live well and see how we go. I'm allowed 20 of these in New South Wales, which is reasonably generous. I mean, they're not a particularly big fish. So I think 20's okay, there's heaps here. <laughs> that was ridiculously easy. I just dropped it in the water and had him. All right, in the live well with you. Let's see if we can get a bigger one. Oh, there's a few bigger ones there now. So I'm just cutting little bits of prawn here. I've only got a couple of prawns because I don't, you don't need much bait. And I've got a tiny little hook. It's about a, oh, about a number 14 long shank, I think. I could have probably gone a bit bigger looking at some of these gar here, but anyway. I do want to get some bait sized ones as well. Let's see how we go with our second bait. Well, that's a small bait. Let's see what happens with that. <laughs> They're swimming right up to the boat here, so I'm not really casting. Oh, that's a bigger one. <laughs> Slightly bigger anyway. <laughs> Oh, I'm getting them out of the water before they start to fight and they're, they're doing all their fighting here. Their scales come off very, very easily. You can see scales probably all over my hands. Oh, and he just pooped on me, that one. That's another thing they're famous for. My simple stale bread burly certainly working its magic. Float fishing, I love it. It just brings out the kid in me. <laughs> I've always enjoyed float fishing, whether it's mud eyes under a bubble float for trout or cabbage weed under a stem float for blackfish, whatever. There's just something about watching that float and seeing it slide under the surface. The anticipation is delicious. And the waiting time between bites isn't very long either. There's another one. Sure, they're only little fish, but they're willing and fun to catch. <laughs> they tick all the right boxes for me. Oh, there's one. Oh, hooked himself. Oh, that's a, that's a little bit better. <laughs> I think that's getting up into the eating size category. If I can get a dozen or so like that, that'd be great. And the way I'm going, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Although you shouldn't count your garries until you've caught them. Let's try a longer cast back to where the bread's been drifting. I reckon I've got one up there. Yep, not particularly big. Oh, not bad. No, bait size one. Hooked himself. I'm playing around with different baits for the garfish too. 
Well, it's interesting, little slivers of pilchard actually seem to be working marginally better than the prawn. So I'll try that again. It's just a sliver of pilchard with some skin attached and you don't want it trailing behind the hook too much. You want it up on the hook. Otherwise they'll just grab at the end of it and drag it. That'll do the job. Small bait, but they're only small fish. However, what they lack in size, they certainly make up for in numbers. Oh, that's a better one. <laughs> Not big, but a bit bigger. Oh, that might be the equal best. Well, he's got a, a real scar on his side. Something grabbed him at some stage. a bite straight away the float drags sideways sometimes it doesn't go down it just goes sideways and you just tighten into them I'm rigged so that the baits only about that far under the surface if you go too deep you start catching things like brim oh, and other stuff that you don't really want the garries really do seem to like to feed up near the surface so you can see how deep I'm sitting the top of that floats just out of the water and there's the bait wafting around there I've got a little bit of weight right at the bottom of the float it's a very simple little rig there's a lot of different ways you could do it just as there seems to be a lot of different ways that you can prepare garfish for the table I actually went on to YouTube and watched six or eight different videos and they were all different about how to prepare garfish there's the rolling it with the bottle or the rolling pin oh there's a good one Oh, he jumped like a marlin. <laughs> ah, look at that. What a beauty. Yeah, so many different ways to prepare them for the table. I'm going to try a couple of ways. Wow, he wasn't mucking around that one. Well hooked. I'm starting to get together a nice bag now. Breeze is picking up, and funnily enough, since that breeze picked up, the garfish actually seem to be biting a little bit better. There's a bite. Still got it. He's swimming sideways with it. Got him. Little fella, a little bait one. I better do a quick count of how many I've got. As I said, the bag limit's 20 and I've been getting a few now. I'm also going to put them into an ice slurry, which will be good for them both for bait and for eating. And all that is is a mixture of ice and salt water. Fantastic for keeping fish fresh. I've got my slurry in an insulated fish bag, but you can use an esky or cooler too. And it's a good thing I counted them because I'm getting very close to my 20. Okay, let's fire out another cast. I only need one more. Oh, there's a bite. And I got him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, they're definitely liking that bit of pilchard. Ooh. Oh, lost him right there. It's a good one too. What a shame. That was a good one. Oh, I can see a few bigger ones moving out around there now. And, oh, oh, they're having a go. They're having a go. They're definitely liking the pilchard more than the prawn. Come on, I just need one more. Got him and he's tiny. Oh, and he fell off. It's all happening. Still a little bit of bait on there. I'll flick it out and have another go. Huh? It's just another little one. Righto, that's my 20. Time to pack up and head home. But don't go away because I'm going to share some cleaning and cooking tips with you. Okay, so I ended up with my 20 garfish from that session. They started off really well, but then they slowed down a little bit. And I suspect that was because I was in a landlocked lake with no tidal flow. So it was a little bit hard to get them really keyed into the burley trail. But anyway, 
I ended up with my 20 of mixed sizes. So the first thing that I'm going to do is sort them out into the bait size ones and the ones I want to eat. They went straight into an ice slurry after a couple of minutes in the live well and then they've been in the fridge overnight and it's really chilled them down and firmed them up and that's something that I like to do with a lot of fish. I find them much easier to handle and process if they're chilled down first. All right, let's sort this 20 out. So I reckon that's gonna be sort of the size that I'm going to eat from that up. So I'm just gonna put that one on that plate. That one, that one definitely. That's a bait one. Ooh, touch and go, bait, bait, bait. All right. So what I'm gonna do with the ones that I've set aside to use as bait is I'm going to cryo vac them or vacuum seal them. I'm going to put them in plastic bags, suck all the air out. I'll cut the beaks off so they don't end up poking through the bag or whatever. And I'll put them in the bags, suck all the air out and snap freeze them. And they'll be fantastic for bait. First up though, I want to have a bit of a play with the different methods of cleaning garfish for the table. And like I said, I looked at a whole bunch of different methods on YouTube. The ones about rolling it with a bottle and everything else. And some of it looks really interesting. I'm going to try a couple of them. I'm going to try the rolling one. I'm not going to use a bottle. I'm actually going to use this U-Butte Fish Club that uh, Stephen Garlic made for me. I used it to kill carp and other large heavy fish to kill them quickly and humanely, but I reckon it'll also be just about perfect for rolling out a garfish. So maybe we'll try that first. Now the scales have all pretty much come off these garfish, but I'll just give them a bit of a rub. I've got a bucket here with some salt water in it. I bought some water home with me yesterday after fishing. There's actually still a surprising amount of scales left on that gari, so I'm gonna have to scale them. As I said, I brought home a bucket of salt water from where I was fishing yesterday. I'm a great believer in not putting saltwater fish in fresh water. In fact, you don't want to just leave your fish soaking in water, particularly if you've already filleted them or cleaned them or whatever. Leaving them soaking in water will leach out a lot of the flavour and nutrients. By all means, use a bit of salt water just to give them a quick wash, just to get those scales off or whatever but don't leave them soaking in it. The least exposure you can give them to water, the better. I'm not one of these super fastidious people who thinks that you can't touch them with water at all or you're gonna wreck them. It's just not the case, but you certainly don't wanna leave them soaking. All right, so what I'm gonna do with this one is gut it. Just slide the knife in the vent, go all the way through to the gills, get rid of the guts. I don't like to waste anything. So all the guts and heads and frames, I'm gonna keep all that and freeze it for burley. Really good stuff. Now, I'm gonna cut the head off. That'll go in my burley bucket. And I'm going to slice down either side of the ventral fin towards the tail. Now, garfish do have a black stomach lining and it's, it does definitely improve the flavor if you can remove as much of that as possible. You can use a spoon uh, or your thumbnail or a bit of rag like I'm using here and just get rid of that. I'll give it another quick dip in the salt water. Okay, so I've got a headless garfish and I've split down either side of the backbone at the tail. And again, I've seen a couple of different ways. You can lie and belly down, you can lie and belly up. So everyone seems to have a different way of doing this. I'm gonna try lying it belly down and rolling it with this fish club. You can hear the bones breaking. What they all say about this, the fans of it, is that it allows you to remove the backbone and it breaks up all the other bones, makes them into tiny little pieces, which they claim you can just eat and it's uh, not that distracting. So we'll see just how right they are about that. I should then be able to just grab this backbone and tear it out. Works pretty well. It's taking a little bit of flesh with it. I probably needed to separate that a little more down here. I've never done this before, so apologies in advance if, uh, if it's not looking all that neat. 
there we go there's the backbone out there is a bit of flesh on it so we've lost a little bit but it will go in the burley and there's basically my butterfly fillet ready to go I could trim all those other bones out but they're all smashed up now by the roller so I'm going to try that cook it up and just see whether those bones are annoying or not it would be interesting all right another way that I really like the look of was to use a thin bladed and ultra sharp knife this is an old Rapala knife that I've had for years and it's really really fine and quite flexible and I like it for this kind of fine work oh I better knock the scales off this one first and when if you scale fish with your knife use the back of a knife so you don't blunten it yeah there's a few scales left on this one as well a lot of them did come off when I was handling them but um, enough stayed on to be quite annoying if you didn't get them off at this stage so I'll just do it into my bucket here all over my shirt as well <laughs> uh, scaling fish is a messy operation and it's why I skin a lot of my fish but I gotta say they do taste pretty good when you leave the skin on things like whiting and flathead skin on scale them and leave the skin on it's absolutely delicious particularly if you can master crispy skinned fish which is something we'll look at in a future video all right what I'm going to do now is go in on the back of the fish not the belly and not the tail there's actually three lines on the back of a garfish one follows the spine or the backbone and there's one either side of it. and I'm actually going to follow those outside lines as I cut along the back of the garfish it's a bit of uh, micro surgery this a little bit of mucking around but gee I really did like the look of the result that a couple of the people got on YouTube doing it this way so I thought I'd give it a go you got to go down and feel for the backbone and then you don't really want to cut through the bones you want to go over them and sort of separate it a little bit with your finger you notice I didn't gut this one if I do this right I shouldn't need to and I'm going through the very fine line of pin bones at the moment which are the horizontal bones that stick up towards the lateral line of the fish they're not the rib bones I'm going around the rib bones separating oh this is working actually quite well just like the guy on the on the YouTube clip that I watched being very careful not to slice through into the stomach cavity and I leave everything attached down at the belly this is what I've been able to achieve you can actually see the greeny blue bones of the uh, the spine of the fish in there I can't remember whether old mate chopped the head off first or not but I haven't done that I can do it later all right now I'm going to go in on the other side and try and repeat the process <laughs> you wouldn't want to be paying me by the hour to do this it's not a fast process especially if you've never done it before I'm sure you'd get much much better at it after you've done it a few times okay it might be easier if I turn it around to face me I am going to cut that head off in with the burly right getting somewhere now through the pin bones and down but I'm not actually going to separate it along the belly I should be able to lift this backbone out I'm not entirely sure I got this right hey we're learning together here uh, I'm gonna chop right through can't be bothered trying to keep it as a butterfly fillet <laughs> all right so I've ended up with strips rather than the butterfly but um, they're pretty nice but nothing like the lovely butterfly fillets I saw on YouTube I obviously need to work on this look feel free to offer me your advice in the comments below I'm always keen to learn backbone out all right I don't think I've done a particularly flash job of that at all let's try a different technique on this one just a straight fillet job something I'm far more familiar with and any of those of you who've watched me before know that I'm a from the tail filleter which is not exactly what it says to do in the textbooks but it works for me you can go from the head I'll show you just go in like that turn the knife over follow the backbone see I'm not as good at going that way something about coming from the tail makes it easier for me to follow the spine 
but there you go two very quick fillets not bad at all frame in the burly I'm going to do them this way and then cut the bones out it's pretty funny when it comes to preparing and cooking fish there are so many different opinions on how to do it and people have a tendency to say no that's the wrong way this is the way you do it look do what works for you and what you enjoy and what you find easiest don't be guided by those people who have absolutely rigid ideas about how you should and must do everything that works for you keep doing it that's my theory on so much of fishing I wind my spinning and flyer reels with my left hand and I'm right-handed, that's the way I like to do it. Doesn't mean it's the only way to do it. There are plenty of very good anglers who wind with their dominant hand. Just do what works for you. This is working for me. I've ended up with a plate full of different styles of fillets, including the butterfly ones that I rolled with a heavy fish bat. I'm especially keen to try these as I've always been a tad sceptical about how well it might work. <laughs> we'll see. I'm going to crumb them using these panko breadcrumbs, a favourite of mine. First up I dust the pieces in plain flour. I'm using the empty panko bag after pouring the crumbs into a storage container. Next I dip the pieces in beaten egg, making sure they're well covered. You can add a little bit of milk to the eggs if you need to extend them a bit. Lift the pieces out of the egg wash and into the bowl of panko crumbs. You don't need to thickly coat them. I find that pressing the pieces down with the back of my hand helps the crumbs to stick. That's perfect. I'm heating oil in a pan. Get it nice and hot. Test it with a couple of crumbs. If they fizz and dance around, it's hot enough. I like high smoke point oils like rice bran and grapeseed. OK, in goes the fish. Thin, delicate pieces like this don't take very long to cook. A minute or two each side is plenty. The last thing you want to do is overcook them. Turn the fish after a minute or two. The crumbs should be golden brown, not burnt. Ooh, that's looking pretty good. That one's very close to being done. And remember, it'll keep cooking for a while after it's removed from the oil. Lift the piece out and place it on some absorbent paper towel to drain. You can serve it with salad, chips, on a taco, in a bun, or just eat it as it is. Delicious. Okay, they're right. Once you've rolled it with the bottle or the rolling pin or whatever, you can just eat the lot. I mean, I can see that there's bones in there, but you can't feel them. And you can't taste them. That's pretty clever. Uh, I might be a convert. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to cook the rest up and keep eating it. It's so delicate. Really, really nice flavour. Don't disregard the humble garfish. There's plenty of them around and they're not hard to catch. Until next time, this is Stalo wishing you tight lines and bon appetit. And if you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up down below and consider subscribing to the channel if you don't do so already. Cheers. Oh, and keep watching. There's a little blooper at the end. Oh, that's a sharp knife. I just don't